All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about an upcoming possible surge in the tropics for the Atlantic. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also like to invite you to join our very exciting and very active Discord server where we talk about all things weather. I'm very active there as well. That's gonna be in the pinned comment down below and I would love to see you there and to discuss the weather with you. Now for today's comment of the day, I wanna know how many more tropical storms do you think we will have by the time we reach the beginning of August? Let me know in the comments down below and give me a reason why and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our rising air motion and our sinking air motion. Rising air helps thunderstorms develop, which in turn also helps tropical storms develop. You can see that all of that is basically located for the Pacific and the Indian Ocean. And we have reds in the Atlantic, which encourages sinking motion, which discourages tropical activity. That's why we're kind of having a quiet period and the Pacific is very active. Uh, for example, here's the five day graphical tropical weather outlook for the Pacific. You can see we have two reds, which means 60% chance or above of tropical uh, tropical formation. And then also we have two yellows, which is below 40% chance, but still a chance. So we have four separate systems in the Pacific right now. Very, very action-packed out there right now. We're going to talk more about the Pacific in just a second. We're going to take a look at the satellite currently for the Eastern Pacific. All right, so here's that current satellite, and as you can see, we have tons of action in the Eastern Pacific, and this has to do with that rising air motion. I've been showing you guys those greens versus orange areas, but I'm able to show you right now how it affects areas. As you can see, they were in the green area, and now they're having tons and tons of tropical activity in this region that was in the green. All right, now let's talk about a little bit about Tropical Storm Dolly, or what was Tropical Storm Dolly. I did not think this one was going to develop any further. However, it surprised all of us when it decided to develop into a subtropical storm and become our named storm of Dolly. So now we've had an A, B, C, and D storm. So we are well into our journey into the alphabet and it's very early on. We're still in June. We're set for a very hyperactive season. It's going to be very interesting to watch and track with you guys and see what happens. And again, we're going to be talking all about this on the Weather Discord throughout uh, the rest of the year. So please join us as there's going to be tons and tons of fun and active conversation going on about each of these individual systems. Now here is kind of the forecasted cone track. It's going to really dissipate in just a, a day or two. Uh, by tomorrow morning, it will be kind of really dissipated. And then after that point, it's expected to completely dissipate. Here's it on current satellite as of right now. And as you can see, just a mess. Uh, hardly any clouds in there. This one is going to end very, very quickly. Uh, so we're pretty much done with Dolly. But Dolly was able to tr develop into a tropical storm or a subtropical storm, that is. And that was very interesting to see happen. And it just goes to show weather can catch you off guard and surprise in a lot of cases. Now we're going to move on and we're going to see where that rising motion is going to lead to, where it's going to move to, and we're going to see what effects it could have for that region. Now you guys saw how important the rising air motion was, and by the time we reach June 26, which is only in two days from the time I'm making this video, the greens are going to enter into portions of the Atlantic. It's still going to be in the Pacific, but we are going to see those light greens enter areas like the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, the east coast of the United States, and the middle of the Atlantic. The only important thing I must mention is we have that dust. We do have that Saharan dust all over the place if you've been watching our recent videos. So we're going to see a lull. We are going to see that interfere with the tropical activity. But there is a sweet spot that I've been mentioning where that dust is going to move out. And we're going to see the tropical potential greatly increase as we will have this rising motion in place during that time frame when we do see the humid air return. Now by the time we reach Monday, July 6th, you can see the dark greens enter the Gulf and the Caribbean and the East Coast. And this is when that sweet spot is going to be. The, the dust will have moved out by this time frame. And we're going to see a greatly increased probability of tropical activity. Now, even though I'm saying there's going to be a surge in the tropics and there could be impacts for the Gulf or the East Coast, that doesn't guarantee we will see a system. We never see a guarantee of a system. All I can say is that the percent chance of seeing tropical activity is going to go from nearly nothing too high probability for this time of year. So the odds are that we will see systems, a system or multiple. However, that doesn't ever guarantee that we will see one. Although I do definitely anticipate between the 1st and the 10th of July that there will almost certainly be at least one tropical disturbance to track, if not more. 
All right, now we're going to move on to the end of the model run for this one. And then we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at a system that the GFS has been hinting at, a potential Gulf Coast impact of a tropical storm or hurricane coming up. So we're going to take a look at that in the coming moments. All right, and here we are taking a look at the end of that model run. And as you can see, once we reach July 10th, the greens are going to start to really uh, leave the Gulf states, the Caribbean, and the East Coast. That's why I say from the 1st through the 10th is kind of that sweet spot where I think we could have a lot of tropical activity because it really becomes less favorable after that point as it appears in, on the screen right now as we see the sinking motion kind of return or at least the neutral. However, this is the end of the model run, so uh, this really could be wrong, I guess. I guess we could stick in the greens. This is usually a revolving pattern. Usually we see we're red sometimes, sometimes we're green, sometimes we're red, sometimes we're green. And we're going to see this throughout the hurricane season. It's very unlikely for it to stay green or red the entire time. We're going to see it going back and forth as it's kind of a revolving pattern, uh, just like everything in weather. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at that potential system that the GFS wanted to hint at. And this is 240 hours out. So this is by no means a guarantee, like I said before. Uh, this is just, again, this is just a model taking advantage of that favorable period and it does think that we will see a system within that favorable period again the gfs model was the one we were using to see that rising air motion so just to kind of reiterate the fact that i do think this would meet, lead to a very favorable pattern the gfs does have a system develop in between kind of the yucatan peninsula there and cuba you can see that there is a red area there kind of developing and eventually, as we move on towards 282 hours out, which would be Monday, July 6th, you can see it reaches just offshore of the Gulf Coast there by the Florida Panhandle, the coasts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. Again, location isn't very important. The only thing that matters is it does have a system developing during this favorable period, so it thinks it's going to be a favorable period as well, and it does think that the odds of a tropical system developing are quite large, as I do as well. Between the 1st and the 10th of July, like I said before, the dust will be moved out. We will see the rising air motion move in, and there's going to be about a 10-day window there uh, where the, the odds of tropical activity are going to greatly, greatly increase there, and this model again, takes advantage of it and thinks that we will see something hit the coast. All right, now eventually this one actually has it move out. It's going to hit the Florida Panhandle. It's going to move up into kind of the Appalachian Mountains, and then it's going to move offshore of the East Coast. And this model has it redeveloping, actually, as you can see that uh, area. And I guess well, 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 maybe it's just to the north of Bermuda is where you should be looking there. You can see there is an uh, area with some pretty dark reds. That's our system that we saw in the Gulf before. It has it completely redeveloping. I don't know why I'm showing this. I guess I thought it was kind of interesting uh, if this was to be the case because we do have favorable ocean conditions out there as well. So that's something we need to pay attention to as well. The middle of the Atlantic also will have that rising air motion. All right, now we're going to move on and we're going to just show you guys the dust pattern. I'm going to show you guys when the dust is expected to move in to the Gulf and the Caribbean and then when it's expected to move out of the Gulf and Caribbean when we can see that favorable period begin. So I guess just to clarify, we're going to see the rising air motion, which again creates very favorable conditions. We're going to see that enter the area before we see the dust move out. But it is going to be almost impossible for tropical development within these bright yellow colors because of just how much dry air and how much dust is in the air. So what we're really going to be waiting on is that dust to move out. That's when the clock is going to start ticking and we're going to start entering that favorable period. And we're going to see that those chances begin for the, the Gulf and the Caribbean here. So this is by June 25th. You can see we are going to be full on. This is by tomorrow from the time I'm making this video. We're going to be full on dust mode for the Gulf and the Caribbean. It's going to be basically 0% chance of development. We know there's not going to be a chance of development tomorrow because there's not even a system there to develop. However, by July 4th, take a look at that. All the yellows are gone. We see an average amount of dust there, some purples and blues and spots. That's very typical. Uh, and the chances for tropical development by July 4th will be greatly increased, and it will be very possible that we do see 
Uh, some systems take advantage of that rising air motion for the Gulf, the Caribbean, uh, the Bahamas areas. Even the East Coast isn't safe either. Uh, so really, the, the opportunities are endless for these tropical systems once we enter this favorable rising air motion period. Uh, during, again, from the 1st to the 10th of July, I think there's going to be multiple opportunities for tropical development, but there's no guarantee. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what season do you anticipate most each year? And Kevin Pavone, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, said, I anticipate fall because it's his favorite season and I love the cooler temperatures. And I think a lot of people agree with you. I always get excited for the fall cooler temperatures once it's been a long, long summer. It's probably not going to be a long summer this year because it's July or it's sorry, it's the end of June and we're just starting to feel those summer temperatures move in. Uh, So it probably won't feel that long, but most years it does. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.